In this video, we will look at proportion. Now, this is basically comparing two numbers or quantities. So, I'm going to write here compare or even two ratios. So, now what happens here is let's say I have a number A or a quantity of something A and that increases. Then I can have B, which is another number, and it can also increase or B could decrease. So, these two, A and B, have a relationship they stand in a relationship to each other so let's look at the two types of proportion that you get the first one is direct and the second one inverse now it's very important to note the difference between the two so when you're looking at direct proportion let's say we go and we use those a and b units again if the one quantity increases the other one will also increase. So you see both arrows are going up. Or, on the other hand, if the one quantity decreases, the other will also decrease. And we're going to look at some examples now. Then on the other side, um, here by the inverse, we can also have two units, A and B. But if the one unit increases, the other one will decrease. Or, let's say, A will decrease and then B will increase. So they have an opposite type of relationship. Okay, let's look at some examples um, when we're talking about direct proportion especially. Let's talk about the taxi price per kilometre driven. Now you know if you drive further in the taxi, you're going to have to pay more. So if the kilometres increase or the distance, the price will also um, increase. And with weight, let's say as you eat less, you're going to lose some weight, right? So that's also going down. So both arrows are pointing in the same direction. That's how you know it's direct proportion. And then finally, let's say you work more overtime, your hours work increases, then um, you will receive more overtime because you receive more uh, money. Or it could also work the other way around. If you work less hours, you'll receive less overtime. Same thing. Okay. Now let's look at the inverse example, because this could be a bit challenging to some, but I'm going to show you a basic way to look at it now. Let's say the hours to build a wall increases if you have fewer builders. Think about that. Now we can also show it the other way around. Let's say um, you have more builders now. It's going to take less hours to build the wall. So we have that opposite type of relationship here. And then the price of a vacation. Now you could put anything in here. Pizza. Um, movie tickets, the prices will always decrease if more people pay for it. So if you group of five going and you split the bill, it's actually going to be a whole lot cheaper. Okay, And it's also true if you swap both direction of the arrows. I also want to show you something when it comes to this table, because um, they use a table to sometimes explain direct and indirect proportion. So let's see, when it comes to direct proportion and you have a table, you will see that going from X to Y, there's a simple thing that you can do. You just multiply by two. Look at all the X's, zero multiplied by two is still zero, one multiplied by two is two, four multiplied by two is eight and so forth. So in this case, if you go and you say, I'm going to divide X and Y. So let's take a few examples. Let's say 4 divided by 8 or 8 divided by 16, you get half constantly. Or let's say you divide y and x, so you say y divided by x, then you'll get 2 the whole time. So there's always a constant ratio um, when you divide the x and the y. So when you say x divided by y or the other way around, y divided by x, you will get a constant and when you want to show that on a graph or illustrate that on a graph, it's actually going to look like this. It's going to be a straight line with your x here on the horizontal bar and your y on the vertical one. Okay. So just remember, in, in questions or tests, what we're going to do later on, um, to find this constant here, you must divide. So I'm going to make a note of that there. You have to divide for direct proportion. It's easy. Remember the D and the D. Okay. Then when it comes to inverse proportion and you look at the table, 
you'll note that if I want to go from x to y, x to y, there is, there is a um, constant relationship, but it's a bit more difficult to find it. If you multiply both of them, so you multiply x and y, let's take a few examples, let's say 1 times 1,200, 2 times, a th 2 times 600, sorry, you'll get 1,200 every time when you multiply x and y. So, in our case, if you multiply x and y, you will get a constant. So, the um, graph would look like this. And then also remember that if you want to find this inverse constant or the relationship, you're going to have to multiply. Okay. Now, let's see if we can look at an example here. If it takes five workers 10 hours to build a wall, how long will it take two workers? Okay, so I am looking for the hours here in this case. Now we start by saying, is this a, um, a direct or inverse relationship? Now note that if I have more workers, I'm going to take less time. So you see the arrows, um, they point in different directions, which tells me this is an inverse relationship. So if I'm looking for the constant, that's my next step, I'm going to have to multiply. Right, so I'm going to say that um, five workers times the 10 hours. They're in the first sentence because they, they're in their own little group. Five workers and 10 hours. If I multiply that, I get 50. That's the constant. Now, in the next group, I see that I have if I have two workers, so there's two workers times, I don't know how many hours, that's what I'm looking for, I must still get that constant. Because if I multiply, I should get a constant. The constant is 50. So what do I now need to multiply um, by 2 to get 50? And we know the answer is 25. Okay, and then in this last example, you will find 16 bananas to 24 apples. I'm going to write that down as a ratio. And also, if then there are 10 bananas to x apples, determine x. So 10 bananas to x apples. Now, remember, this could be in a package, they're selling it as a package, and um, there's your apples, and there's your bananas, and now if I increase the number of bananas, I have to increase the number of apples, or if I decrease the number of bananas, I'm going to have to decrease the number of apples, so that they can stay in the same ratio. This then tells me this is um, a direct relationship, and the apples and bananas are in direct proportion. So... If I want to now compare these two quantities and find the constant, I have to divide. What do I divide? The x and the y. So maybe the bananas are the x and the y is um, the apples or the other way around. It doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down, um, I'm going to take this first ratio, 16 to 24, and write it as a fraction. I put 24 on top, but you could easily swap this. It really doesn't matter which one goes on top. Put 24 on top, and then... On the other side, I am now going to put the second ratio, 10 to x. But remember now, since I put the 24 on top, I now have to put the x on top. So meaning, um, let's say we started with apples here, and then bananas. Now it has to be apples again, and then bananas. So the apples here is x, and the bananas in the second ratio is 10, the amount of bananas. Alright, so we know they are equal to each other. That's what direct proportion means. So, we write that equal sign. Okay, now if we want to find x, what we do is we cross multiply. So, 24 times 10 is 240, and 16 times x is 16x. And then if I want to find x, I have to divide by 16 on both sides. And... If I divide by 16 on both sides, I'm left with x on this side, 15 on the other side. Okay, so x is our answer, which means um, if there were 10 bananas, then there would be 15 apples. Now that's the end of our video. Please remember to share, like, subscribe, and become part of the Whiteboard SA team.